we had seen from Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 17 to 19. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth, and nothing is too hard for thee, Lord. Our God. Our God is a mighty God who has created heaven and the earth for whom nothing is too hard. 18th verse says, He is a God who shows loving kindness to thousand generations. He is a great and mighty God who gives his counsel to his people and reveals his might. And his eyes are upon the sons of men to give each one according to their ways and according to the fruit of their fruits. So let us see what are the points we have seen last week. Last week we saw three points. First point we saw was the strength of the inner man. The inner man should be strengthened. If we have to stay strong in the kingdom, our inner man should be strong. And the strength we receive is from the Holy Spirit power, from the word of God and from the revelation of the love which God has got for us. Second point we saw about the revelation of church. What is church? So how church is covered with a cloud and smoke piping by the glory which is a defense or a protection for us. God takes us into this place as a shadow, as a refuge, as a covert from storm and rain. And the third point we saw was abiding in His Word. While abiding in His Word, how we see great blessing. We hold on to God's Word because we honor Him, we have faith in Him, we love Him. And God reciprocates and honors our faith by giving us a blessing. So, today, we'll go to the fourth point, which is abiding in His grace. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 to 4. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 to 4. At the time, at the same time, says the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? And they shall be my people. Thus say the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest, the Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tablets, and shall go forth in dan the dances of them that make merry. Let us stand and honor the word. Father, we bring this word of God to your throne of grace, let your might and power rest upon this word. Holy Spirit, reveal to us the depths of this word. We pray, Father, that this truth from this word strengthen our spirit, that we may live a life of dominion on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Yes. So the fourth point about staying strong in the kingdom is abiding in God's grace. God says here, the families of Israel, who are we? We are the spiritual Israelites. Who's our forefather? Our forefather is Abraham. Because we have come through his faith. We serve a God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Spiritually, we are connected into the line of Abraham. For whoever is in Christ, they are the children of Abraham, the seed of Abraham. So here we see God saying, I will be the God of all families of Israel. Who is our God? A God is a God who created heaven and the earth. He says, they shall be my people. 
they shall be mindful. There's something about possession here. Saying, we are his people. Hallelujah. God says, the one who created heaven and the earth, he says, I will be their God and they shall be my people. We need to be privileged for God telling us that we are his people. So he says here, the people which were left of the soul found grace in the wilderness. Talking about the remnant. The ones who had murmured and questioned God and asked Moses, why did you bring us here? All these were abomination before God. God did not like it. He brought a sword upon them. There is a remnant which got saved from this sword. They found what? Grace. We are also like that. We were walking without God. And we were enemies of God. We were to be punished. But the Lord Jesus took our punishment at the cross. And while we believed in the Lord Jesus, we became the remnant. The one who were saved from the sword and found grace. That's what it says here. The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. We were walking in the wilderness like those Israelites without God. God did not forsake us. While we believed in the Lord Jesus, we were immediately taken into this kingdom. We found grace. This grace which we found is what has made us worthy to receive everything from God's presence. The grace which we receive through Jesus Christ has made us worthy there are many who say have the guilty feeling. They feel that they are not worthy to receive certain things. No. We who have accepted the Lord Jesus have found grace. And that grace has made us worthy. Worthy to receive. So it says in Hebrews chapter 4, 12, it says, Let us go boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to receive grace to help at the time of need. To obtain mercy to receive grace. In other words, we who have found grace, we have been made worthy to enter God's presence anytime, to ask of Him for anything. For He said, I am your God and you are my people. He is our Father. We are His children. So we have the right to enter this room where the throne of grace is there with boldness and say, Lord, my God, my Father, I need this. If somebody feels, no, I'm not worthy to go and ask God. That means they have not understood grace. It is not because of our worthiness, but we have been made worthy by the Lord Jesus. He's removed all the guilt from us. He's removed all our shame. He's removed all our sin. He took upon himself at the cross and he gave us his righteousness, his honor, his power he's given us. He made us sit beside him in the heavenly places. And how much he has changed our life. We who have nothing has been made as the children of God. It's a great privilege. So this, God says, when you have found grace, even Israel, which I went to cause him to rest. What happens when you find grace? The one who finds grace will also find rest. While God has called you into grace, God says, I will give you also rest. Let the child be free. You are not being disturbed. 
we enjoy children. Okay? So, so God who has called us into this grace says, I have I will also bring rest. What did Jesus say? Those who are burdened and heavy laden, come to me, I will give you rest. And what does the next verse say? Next verse say, Learn of me. Learn of me. I am meek and of lowly heart. Take upon yourself my yoke and it is light. In other words, those who have found grace, while we receive something from God, we need to understand it is the grace of God. We don't have anything to be proud of. When everything goes well, and some people say, oh, it's all my work. No, it's not our work. It's the grace. Why it didn't happen before? Suddenly after you accept the Lord Jesus, things are going fine. Because of His grace. Because grace has got the power to bring you to rest. But as long as you rest upon Jesus. In other words, you hold on to His nature. Say, learn of me. I am meek and of lowly heart. In other words, humility is what this at least see the promise for this month is also about the God who is high above. He looks at who? Those are with a lowly heart. In other words, humble heart. You see, this is a law. This is a law. You see, even the people of the world. While they are very humble, you see, they they see a lot of uh, uh, growth in their life because it is a law which is put into uh, motion. Anyone on this earth who shows themselves humble before God, even if they don't know the true God, they say, "God, who created me, I'm humble before Him." God will lift them up. When they don't have a revelation about Jesus, it's a law. God says, I am high above in heaven, but I look down into this earth, into the lowly, the humble heart. So, the one who have found grace should also know that it is not because of them, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It's not by our might or power, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit because of the grace of God. Whatever we are, we are now. If God wants to lift us up, He will lift, up, lift us up according to 1 Peter 5 8 and 6. Humble before, humble thyself before the hand of God and He will exalt you in due time. Your humility before God, mighty hand is before His word. While you humble yourself before His word, when you go under His word, God will lift us up when in due time. We become very humble and we do everything what the Lord says to do, but we want immediate actions. You always say, Lord, I did everything, Lord. Now, where is my blessing? If Abraham had asked that, right? and if he had got weary and he had left, Believing God, what would have happened to us? Because there's one man who believed God. God found that the seed of Abraham who are coming through Christ also will have the same benefits of the, these blessings. So here we see the humility while you are in the grace, humility is what will bring rest. Abiding in His grace is by depending on God and His word. Third chapter, third verse says, The Lord hath appeared old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness I have drawn thee. God has revealed His mercy, His loving kindness, His mercy. And He found compassion on us. And with his loving kindness, with his mercy, with his compassion, he has drawn us towards him. Why? 
He didn't want us to be in that situation anymore. He found that we were suffering, but we were looking at God for help. You know, in the last verses, last two verses in uh, Exodus first chapter, God who looked from above found the Israelites crying out to God for help. And it's written over there. God found them. God had respect for them. God had respect for them. In other words, God had honor for them. Why? Because they called unto God in their situation. And they called unto for help. They showed their humility. They showed their dependence on God. Many times we don't receive help because we don't show our dependence on God. Right? I'll tell you one thing. Many of us have come from a um, different background, uh, idol worship and everything. Let us say one thing. When we were worshipping idols, I am certain all of us who are here would have got up early morning at 3, 3.30 and gone to worship the idols sometime or the other. Or many times. Or it was a regular affair. I have gone for 40 days when I fought. I used to get up at 3.30 and be there at 4 o'clock after having a cold water bath. To be sure those days. But still, I used to do that and go and stand there at 4 o'clock to see the idol given, giving, a, given a bath with milk and all those things. You know, that is a blessing for you to see this. So I used to go there. But now we are having a 5.45 service, early morning service, once in a month. Many believers find it difficult to come, am I right? Take a look who could come, who are close by. They find, I'm telling you, this street itself, there are two believers. They are not coming. And two or three believers, are, but one of them has come, have come, I think. But two of them were not the person, they never come. Why I'm, I'm telling you, how do we show our faithfulness to God? And we are worshipping uh, idols which do not have any life, no eyes, no ears, no mouth, no hands, we could do nothing. Those times we were so, 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 oh, on fire and going and standing at 3.34 o'clock. But now we serve a living God. What happened to our fire? This is the time we need to have fire for God, am I right? That is what is lacking. Many believers will come from different backgrounds. They come and find rest and they rest, they sleep till later. Even first morning service, they don't want to come. They say, this is, I've gotten to rest. God has given me grace, I've found grace, and I have given, He's given me rest. So why has He drawn you with loving kindness, with compassion? The fourth verse says, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. O virgin of Israel, thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in dances of them that make merry. O virgin of Israel, of Israel, what is it? It's about the church. Our God is a, the Lord Jesus is our bridegroom. And the church is the bride. We are waiting for the bridegroom to come. So he is building us. And he's preparing us, building us, he's building our spirit. Building us and making us ready, making us strong in our spirit. Why do we have to stay strong in the kingdom? That we may meet our Savior when He comes. For that He is building us with His word, strengthening our spirit, and making us like a bride, waiting for the bridegroom. Say, thou shalt again be adorned with tablet and shall go forth with the dancing of them that make men. Adorning us. Adorning us means <coughs> Alambar. 
with the jewels and all this. He wants to see us looking wonderful, good before him. And he wants us to be happy, dancing. So when did the dance come? Hallelujah. Dance has started from heaven, am I right? In God's presence. Now people are dancing, drinking and dancing. That's not dancing. When the King David danced, he was, he was drunk in the spirit means in the spirit of God. And he did not know in the, in the presence of God, he did not know what he was doing. He was immersed in God's presence. And he was dancing away. God wants his church to dance before him with Mary, with joy. The ones who are in grace, abiding in grace, profound grace. God who has given them rest. God says, I will adorn them and I will give them joy and happiness that they may dance and be merry. So abiding in His grace is one of the important points to stay strong in His kingdom. The fifth point, abiding in His love. Abiding in His love brings joy. How? Oh, we'll see. John chapter 15 verses 10 and 11. John chapter 15 verses 10 and 11. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. These are words of Jesus. Since says, if you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love. See, if uh, God commands you to do something, we obey His word. We show that we honor Him. We have respect for him. But a child doesn't obey their father. It is like a, the, the child doesn't honor the father. Remember? Doesn't respect the father. But God who is worthy, He alone is worthy of our honor, of our respect. While He says something, He commands us to do something. While we obey that, what does the word say? We are abiding in this love. In other words, we are revealing our love to our Father. We are honoring Him. You shall abide in my love even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Jesus said, I have kept my Father's commandments and I am abiding in His love. So what is the need to abide in God's love? While we obey the commandments of God, we are abiding in God's love. Now what is the repercussion? What is the effect? What is the benefit which comes out of this? It says that my joy might remain in you. Whose joy? The Lord Jesus' joy will remain in us. And our joy may be full. It says that your joy will be full. While we walk according to God's commands or word, we reveal our love for Him, we abide in His love. That is how the joy which, is a belong, which belongs to Jesus will remain in us, that our joy may be full. In other words, what is joy being full? Let us say, somebody, if you are going to bless somebody with, a, let us say, some money, 10 lakhs you give somebody. Well, that person will be happy. But well, how long? How long will that person be happy? Person will be happy for maybe how long it takes to uh, cash up that money. Some may take half an hour. You think it's so difficult? Even five minutes they cash up. Or maybe people who are a little more having patience, they will cash up in two hours. In other words, that is all. The joy lasts till the money lasts. But God says in His word, while you obey His word and abide in His love, 
the joy which Jesus gives will remain in us and it will, it will exceed inside us, it will be abundant inside us and it will be full. This joy will be full. In other words, whatever may come against us, that is any situation which comes against us, we will not lose joy. People may call us names, they may speak uh, evil about us. Maybe you have not done anything that, but they may speak evil about you. They may, uh, uh, as uh, the Bible says, if you get slapped on one cheek, Jesus said, show you the other cheek too. Am I right? In other words, if you are in a position to do that, all this shows that his jaw is full to you. So those, these things are not disturbing you. Am I right? Because you, not because of anything else, because you obey his commandments, you abide in his love. Therefore, whatever comes against you is not disturbing you because Jesus' joy is remaining in you and your joy is full. Nobody can take that joy. The devil cannot take that joy from you. Right. Never let the joy go. If you are obeying his commandments and you are abiding in God's love, you are strong. Staying strong in his kingdom. What is the enemy? What is the work of the enemy? The work of the enemy is to take you away from the truth, to take you away from God's presence. He's not after your money. Is that spirit being? Am I right? Devil doesn't need your money. He's a he's a spirit being. So what does he want? He wants to see you sorrowful. He wants you to cry. He doesn't want to see you have peace. He doesn't want to see that you have joy inside. If your peace and joy is gone, he is happy. He is not focusing on taking your money out or anything else. His only purpose is to see that you are sorrowful. How do we overcome this? By obeying God's word and abiding in his love that Jesus' joy may remain in us and Jesus' joy may be full. If anything comes against you, you are not shaken. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, O oh Lord. I will not be moved. We sang that song just now, family. The psalmist, his joy was full. How much ever attack came against him, his joy did not go. Because he knew God was with him. The list hands came. He asked God, what should I do? God said, go attack. After a while, again, again the Philistines made some other a new plan. Again, they came against uh, David. Now David again inquires God. Now what will I do? He said, now don't go forward. Go over the mulberry tree and attack them from there. In other words, God has got a strategy. And everything has got a strategy. Why? He wants to see you win. The strategy is to see that you see victory. That your joy will remain full in you. Jesus' joy will remain in you and your joy may be full. When does this happen? When you obey His command. David obeyed God's command. Whatever God said, he did. His joy was full. Am I right? So let us go forward. Let us see two more verses complete. Seventh, eighth, and ninth verse, three verses of John chapter 15, previous verses. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here in my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Hallelujah. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, 
and it shall be done unto you. You abide in Jesus and his words abide in you. You may ask anything and you shall receive. Amen. It says, hear it when you receive. You thereby the name of God is glorified. Father is glorified. But when Father is glorified, say that you bear much fruit. The reason why you see this manifestation of what do you ask you receive is because you are bearing much fruit. You're, you bearing much fruit is basically saying you are obedient to God's word. God, when you are obedient to God's command and word, you have to see the results. Fruit is the result. He says you will bear much fruit. You will see so many results of the word manifesting in your life. That type of obedience to God's word make you no more, you will no more remain as a, as a believer, you will become a disciple. Right? A believer is a believer who believes in Jesus. It doesn't say that he obeys every word. Right? I believe in Jesus, but I don't obey all the word of God. That's what is a believer. But the one who obeys every word, he becomes a disciple. Because that is a person who is going to see much fruit. So much results. Because of his obedience, or her obedience to God's word. They will see whatever they ask, they will see it coming into their life. And who is glorified? The Father is glorified. The reason why the Father is glorified is because of your obedience. He is compelled to give things into your life because you have revealed your love to Him because of your obedience to His word. I'll repeat again. Okay? He is compelled to give what you ask because of your obedience to His word. Because you have faith in Him. He has to reveal His love. You're sure you love him through your obedience. Therefore, he has to reveal his love to you through this fulfillment of that word. That's why it says you see much result. That you may bear much results of fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. How the Father loves you? She says, I am also love you. Continue in my love. Say, continue in my love. Continue to obey my word. That you may see great joy. Obedience to his word will show forth your love for God. Your love for God will show forth results in your prayer life. You will receive whatever you ask. And God says, your joy may be full. Jesus' joy will remain in you. And your joy may be full. So, two things we saw today about staying strong in the kingdom. First, what we saw was abiding in His grace. So, how, while well, abiding in His grace, the people who are in Christ who have found grace, they have also been called to live a life of rest. You who have been called. With loving kindness, He has drawn you. He has called you that He may build your spirit and strengthen your spirit. That you may be adorned or you may, you may be beautified. And you may be filled with joy in your heart that you may dance and praise God before Him. The grace gives you the special position to dance with Mary. You see, uh, uh, traditional churches. Am I right? If they praise God, they will stand like a stick or a rock. But if there is a spiritual church, if you go there, how you praise us according to the word of God. When the Holy Spirit filled David, he could not stay. He had to dance. When the Spirit of the Lord I'll sing like David's song. So 
You need to sing and praise and show your joy before His presence. Before we have to close our eyes while we are praising. It is between you and God and just, oh, in the spirit, move around with joy and reveal your love for Him. Don't bother about who's standing, what they will think, what will this brother think, what will this sister think. No, I'm not bothered. David was not bothered. His wife questioned him. Why are you dancing like You are a king. How can you be like this? Putting your waist on top and you're tying your waist and dancing along with that. Amen. Waist you munchy with it. You are hard in the cat. No, there will have. The streets, you are a king. You are dancing with your. Don't you have shame? That's what his wife said. But what did David say? I did not see anything at all. I only saw my God's presence. And he had done it in the streets. Why can't we do it in the church? Right? People of God who are in the grace. God wants us to dance in his presence. You will see how we are strong in the kingdom. And how we are. And the second thing what we saw today is abiding in his love. Which will come because of our obedience to God's command in this world. And this will bring Jesus' joy in us and will remain in us. That our joy may be full. When we ask anything, He will give it to us. And from that we know that hallelujah, our joy may be full. And we will see more in our Jesus. Let us stand. Father, we thank you. Praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You send your word and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. Pray, Lord, the word of God just the same way. We meditated on your word, my Father. We ask for forgiveness for those times when we were not in position to walk according to this word. For everyone who has asked for forgiveness, just and faithful to okay. Pray, Father, bless each one of us with the precious blood of Jesus, and all the heads of souls. That they may be in the righteousness of God, God Almighty, through Christ Jesus. And we bless everyone who has come with your presence and oneness and spirit. That they may be filled, the vessel may be filled with your power, with your anointing and strength. And your Let them be filled with spiritual strength, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, fill them with your hallelujah, peace and joy, and divine health, Lord, and prosperity, divine prosperity. Fill them, Lord. Jesus, well, they go from this place, come with your grace, that they may live a life of, of dominion. So the word which has come, to be covered with the precious blood of Jesus, the spirit, the enemy doesn't steal. Pray and bless you. Come to your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.